Hello, CA football fans. Glad to have you here for another edition of This Week in CA Football. I'm Bobby Broyles, joined by my co-host, Tim McDonald. And we're bringing you the show a little bit later than usual, but better late than never, right, Bobby? Absolutely, Tim. And, well, only four games on the docket this past week, but there was no shortage of excitement as the day was highlighted by an amazing game that you got to witness in Durham with New Hampshire pulling off some late heroics in a 29-28 win over Villanova on Comcast Sportsnet. Some drama in the dungeon. John Robertson, the quarterback for Villanova, 256 rushing yards. That's mm. a career high. But in perspective, Brian Westbrook, the great there, he was, he's, that's the second highest game of all time. Westbrook had 287 yards. John Robertson also had two incompletions. Nova, they're out of the game late. New Hampshire's up seven. All of a sudden, John Robertson wills his team. They go up seven. A minute nine left. New Hampshire drives down the field, and they score a touchdown. What happens? They call a timeout and say, let's go for two and win it right here. Chris said he had one, runs it in for the win. What a statement win for UNH. They haven't had a big win like that. It's going to have a lot of implications for them moving forward and really salvaging their season, at least for right now. It was certainly exciting to watch, Tim, and I have a feeling that this was only a sign of things to come as we move into the second half of the regular season. New Hampshire wins and improves to 3-3 three and three on the season, while Villanova drops to 4-3. and three. And speaking of Andy Talley's squad, the Wildcats will go through the gauntlet once again as they host Maine on Saturday at 1 o'clock. The Black Bears currently at, at the top of the league standings after a win over William & Mary last week. It's going to be a common theme for teams this week. Forget what happened. Just move mm -hmm. forward and, you know, 24-hour rule. We talk about that all the time. Yep. Maine, fast start. 24 to nothing. they lead in that game over William & Mary, where we thought William & Mary was going to come into that game having a better chance because of their defense. They yep. came in leading the league, only allowing 11 points per game. All of a sudden, you know, after after around halftime, it's 24 to nothing. Mm -hmm. Maine, what else can you say? You know, they've only lost to FBS Northwestern by 14 points. They've won mm -hmm. seven straight against FCS opponents, including two overranked teams. Bobby, you look at this Maine defense and this Maine offense, there's nothing that jumps out to you on the stats. And yeah. You look at the CA stats, Maine, you know, scoring offense, middle of the pack, scoring defense, rush defense, middle of the pack, mm -hmm. they just get it done. That's yep. straight out what they do, and, and that's, that's what's scary about this team moving forward. If Pat, efficient numbers from Marcus Wachaleski and Ricky Stevens came back last week, rushed well for Maine. Wow. Maine right now is really on a roll. Like I said, Marcus Wojcicki now surpassing over 4,000 yards passing in his career at Maine. And I think the key this week, Villanova, that defense, they struggled against the run against New Hampshire. Vinny Curry, some Joey Harmon, the mm -hmm. linebackers for Villanova, they need to get angry and just play with a passion. They're back at home, so that definitely helps. Should be a great one on the main line on Saturday. Kicking off at noon on Comcast Sportsnet will be the Towson Tigers, who are coming off a road win over UAlbany, and now head to Richmond to face a spider squad that dropped a tough one at Rudy. And Towson, for the fourth straight game, they fell behind in the first quarter. You know, this Tigers team, I, I liken them to a, a heavyweight boxer. They like to get in their punches from the opponent and see what's going to happen for the rest of the fight. Then they get it rolling. The offense, mm -hmm. you know, just comes alive. Defensively for Towson, I, I think that's the key. They actually rank first in opponent third down conversion in the CAA, 29%. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. And their offense is first and first down, so that tells you they're going to score. Towson, this is their eighth. They've won eight straight road games since last year. They've had another game on the road this year, that mentality of the road warrior. What else can you say about Richmond? They drop another heartbreaker. I've never heard of a team losing twice in a season because of four field goals. Mm -hmm. Richmond, had, that happened this past weekend. Can you blame the defense of Richmond? Because they've only allowed 12 points in those yeah. two losses and over the last... Over all their losses this season, Richmond only allowed to combine 20 points in those losses. Offensively, Michael Strauss, he's thrown records and he's thrown a lot of completions and numbers this year. That offense, Joe, just has been lacking, especially in the red zone, and I think that's been hurting them. Like we said before the broadcast coming in, they're a great 2020 team. But once they get the in that 20s, red zone, it's, it's tough to condense zone. everything. Yeah. Exactly. Out-of-market viewers can also watch the Spiders and Tigers battle it out as Saturday's game will be simulcast on CAA.TV. A much-improved Rhode Island team will look to build on its big win over Richmond when it hosts the Delaware Blue Hens, who enter Saturday's matinee fresh off their open week. An open week for Delaware, and they come in. Remember the last time Delaware traveled to Kingston, 2011? Oh, yeah. They lost that game. Rhode Island, on the other hand, 15 pass breakups last week versus Richmond. That's huge. That defense played with confidence. They played with nothing. They battled. They just battled to the end. Nothing to lose there. Mm -hmm. Can they get two wins strung together? I don't know if they can. The last time they did it was 2010. Mm -hmm. That's a long time. They did it twice that year. Delaware is lying in the weeds a little bit. I like them here. They're 5-2 and two coming off the, the open week. Again, Delaware, offensively, we know what they want to do. They want to pass the ball with Trent Hurley. Defensively, I think that's the biggest question for this team, especially on the road. They've played bad defensively. They're 0-2 this year. 
only the third game of the, on the road this season. Delaware's last trip to Kingston, though, 2011. Not too well. Rhode Island with the victory in that one. And an in-state showdown awaits us at 3.30 when James Madison makes a quick trip to Williamsburg to take on William & Mary. Duke's also coming off an open week in this one, Tim, while the Tribe will look to rebound after a tough trip to Maine. And the Tribe, you know, offensively, they just struggled in the first half. It, it doesn't help when you go down 24 nothing in versus Maine last week. The offense sputtered. You know, they had 11 passes, Bobby, mm -hmm. just for just over 100 yards, and they just didn't generate any rhythm at mm -hmm. all. And Michael Graham looks, he's going to be the quarterback this week. That's what Coach Laycock said. William Mary going into this game, playing a JMU team who's, you know, had a much needed bye, uh, open week. They had a rest, you know, Mickey Matthews talked about it this week. They got the fundamentals a little bit back this week. William Mary in that offense, Abdul Sabour, the running back, he didn't play last week. So right now, if you're William Mary, just get something going versus mm -hmm. JMU Deeks, Duke's defense. Leads the CAA in rushing 97 yards per game. That's pretty stingy. They also lead the league in sacks. Watch out for that Duke's defense because they're good. We wrap up Saturday's action with New Hampshire returning to the road to square off against a Stony Brook squad that should also be rested after its open week. And Stony Brook, they've been very balanced this year. They've had a bye week to prepare for UNH. Seven touchdowns rushing, seven passing this year. The quarterback, Lyle Negron, he's been very great with his play action, very improved. Malcolm Eugene, his wide receiver, big target, athletic mm -hmm. guy, leads the CAA in receiving. That UNH secondary, you know, they're going to have problems with them. I think that's the key to watch out. They're already banged up. They're without Casey DeAndre, Hayden Nudson. UNH, how do you respond? You get a big win at home over Nova. Now you have to go to the road, a place where they haven't won this year. 24-hour rule. They have to forget that previous game and just move on. UNH, you can't win the CAA without winning road games. They're going to need to get it done there. How about the Stony Brook defense? Victor Ochi, Junior Solis. So many guys, over mm -hmm. a dozen guys, have tackles for loss on this team, which is big. They're going to need to attack the line of scrimmage and stop the UNH run game. UNH ran the ball for a season high 51 times last week. I think that's the key. It's going to be that New Hampshire run game setting up to play action versus Stony Brook D, who doesn't get enough credit. Stony Brook at home, you have to like that, but it's going to be a great game of smash mouth football at the line. You can follow all of this weekend's action on our game day page on caafootball.com, which features links to live stats, audio, video streaming, and more. And don't forget to check in with us on Sunday when we bring you our rundown. And of course, you can follow us on social media. Hit us up on Twitter, at caafootball, and join the conversation with the official hashtag caafb. If you see a top layer, have a question or thought, let us know. We're also on Facebook as well, and Instagram and Vine, too. Just search CA Football. CA Football was in Durham for the Battle of the Wildcats on Saturday. If you haven't checked out our emotional going deep feature on New Hampshire's Roger Spidel, you need to do that on caa.tv or cafootball.wordpress.com, where you can also find interviews, highlights, a campus tour, and even some entertaining UNH tailgate action. We'll be on campus again this Saturday as Alex Souza and Zach Burris head to Long Island to check out CA Football newcomer Stony Brook. You can stay tuned to cafootball.com and our Everyday is Saturday blog for interviews, highlights, and of course our going deep feature on the Seawolves that we'll have for you ready on Tuesday. That will do it for us today. I promise we'll return to our normal day next week, so we'll see you right here next Wednesday. Tim, make sure you don't conflict your hair appointment, please, with our show again. <laughs> At least I have some hair about me to work with. Well, that's mean, but makes it easier in the mornings for me. <laughs> All right, everyone, enjoy the game Saturday. We'll see you next week.